Let's go! We have a DTR film study, and hold on just a second. Before we actually continue, just look at all the wrong that is going on in this screenshot, okay? The fans! How, for the season opener, the best team Chip Kelly has had at UCLA... And the worst part of this screenshot is Liverpool drew Chelsea when we were up by a man. We had to get the three points there. But anyway, enough about that. More about this hellaciously bad throw on first down. So this is after Hawaii dropped the punt. And UCLA gets good field position. Chip Kelly calls a perfect play. And yeah, that's really bad. As was Dorian Thompson-Robinson's performance I love QBR. It's my favorite college metric, and his QBR for this game was 41. So um, I'm, I'm not going to get too deep into QBR, but that is really, really bad. Obviously, 10 of 20 is not great. And in fact, uh, this throw wasn't Dorian Thompson Robinson's worst throw. We'll get to that one in a second. Well, obviously, as an LSU fan, and we got a lot of these comments on our live stream, DTR is trash. He's not any good, and you would think so after this throw. But if he had this opportunity again, he's going to be able to make this throw. So what Chip Kelly does here is this essentially becomes Tripp's bunch pre-snap. And look at this safety, all right? Now, you wonder why LSU's defense was so bad last year. Their safeties were not only poorly coached, um, they, they just weren't that good. The foot speed wasn't there. So pre-snap, look at all the confusion this safety has to go through, okay? So think about it this way. This is going to be Jay Ward and more than likely Major Burns and or a more experienced Todd Harris. But let's just say from an LSU perspective that this is Todd Harris and Jay Ward right here. Now look at what all they're having to decipher here, okay? And look at all these vicious route combinations. And now the safety sees this guy running full speed at him and you see he's flat footed, okay? So DTR sees that. And it's just an easy beat right there, okay? So if you're Durante Jones, you better be ready for this. Chip Kelly knows that LSU's safeties are going to be the weaker part of their secondary compared to, well, the safeties in the slot corner compared to the outside corners with the Bricks and Stingley. So we'll get to that in a second. But think about that, okay? Uh, those corner routes was something, uh, and just attacking uh, the deep corners of the end zone, that was something Mississippi State did a really good job of uh, in the first game versus LSU last season. So you better be ready to go. Three yards, third and four, and believe it or not, this was actually really good quarterbacking here from DTR. And uh, what we're going to do on this film study, once again, is break this up into two parts, okay? So the first part's going to be T DTR's throws, and the second part is going to be DTR's runs. And I, I, I kept hearing about UCLA's good run blocking offensive line, but their pass blocking, particularly in one-on-ones, was not uh, all that great. It's as, as you can see, five blitzers going up against five offensive linemen, and you just trust someone to beat their man. The left guard, horrible technique, gets beat. But DTR actually made the right read. <laughs> He immediately saw this was the matchup. Wide receiver in the slot creates separation. And this is going to be Cordial Flaunt or more than likely a safety here. So you see here, more than likely in the game, this is going to be Ricks and Stingley on the outside. And the safety gets beat on this out. And DTR wants to throw it. He gets ready to throw it. But the receiver actually slipped. This would have been caught for a first down. Then... The left guard who got beat badly is holding the guy. They got away with it there. And this is really good quarterbacking here. So just for time constraints, I'm going to show you this play really quickly from a really fun UCLA Twitter account. Chris Og da, 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 Osgood just throwing out the goods here. Um, this was a completion where they ran a concept called mesh, okay? Remember, we just referenced the Mississippi State game. This is what Mike Leach killed LSU with last year. Do not be surprised if you see a lot of mesh concepts, which is basically uh, your two inside receivers running crossers over the middle. It's a really good man beater. Alrighty, so here we are, first and 10. Hawaii was very aggressive. So they saw that they got home with their, their last blitz one-on-one. -on -one. DTR gets better pass protection, sits, and he is really good at throwing to the middle of the field. 
This is a strike on first down. Good throw, found the weak spot of the zone. And one thing that I saw consistently from rewatching UCLA's game that Durante Jones is going to pick up on is their wide receivers get vertical, okay? They run very deep routes, and you'll see this throughout the film study. So they're running all goes with uh, a route over the middle here, and DTR makes the right throw here. So remember what we were talking about a minute ago? UCLA likes to get really vertical with their routes. Once again, Hawaii brings pressure, and that's smart to do when they're running such deep routes. And it's a third and eight here. DTR is forced to make a decision quickly. He actually throws a really accurate pass, and this is where he had to throw it. Not an easy catch, but you got to make this catch to move the chains. That's a really good throw. Okay, so we pick it up here, second and ten. He's back to throw. Good protection again. All day to throw, eventually fires and hits his check down, okay? Very interesting. So, you know, uh, that's just going to come down to trusting your four guys to beat their five guys. And uh, just good throw, good catch, easy throw. So here we go. This is going to be a very interesting play right here, okay? So it's third and eleven. And I want you to see this right here, okay? UCLA's offensive line is really good at communication, okay? So offensive tackle picks up this blitzer, and now they're communicating who's going to pick up who. Now, I want to share one observation. When Hawaii's tackles would line up over the center, whether it was a shade or a zero tech, so straight ahead up or to his outside shoulder, they had a lot of high snaps, Get a little bit of a high snap there. That's a minor win. Throws off the timing just a little bit. So Hawaii decides to just bring everybody. So now there's seven guys going up against their six. So someone eventually is going to get home. And lucky enough for Hawaii, it was someone through the middle. Okay? So the first thing is I thought Hawaii, uh, I thought UCLA's offensive line was really good at run blocking. I thought the middle of their offensive line when it comes to pass blocking wasn't really that great, okay? And especially they weren't great against penetrators. And by far, LSU's best defensive tackle when it comes to penetration last year uh, was Jaquelin Roy. So I hope Jay Roy gets a lot of snaps here. So the design of this play, 3rd and 11, they run all deep routes except one underneath guy. They had their slot receiver, but for the second time this game, DTR, the receiver gets caught up by the turf monster, which ruins the timing. This is going to be Cordell Flott in this situation, okay? So they're running on deep routes, which clears the middle for DTR to make a throw, and they're trusting 14 to create separation against 24, DTR does a good job giving him time. So this protection actually did break down in the middle, okay? Which eventually it would. You would prefer it to come off the edge. DT does a good job getting this penetration and making this throw tougher. But still, DTR did the smart thing. He scooted back and allowed this wide receiver to create separation. But because he tripped and there was no separation at all, this was not really that bad of a throw, all things considered. And this leads me to my next point, okay? And I understand that Cordell Flott is not really a, a fan favorite on this channel. So we go to the touchdown drive once again, a kind of, sort of, high snap there. DTR has really good chemistry with Britton Brown, the running back, and he throws it to him uh, to the easy check down. He picks up a first down. So... Now, you know, obviously this is a blowout and Hawaii's terrible, but one thing I got to give UCLA's receivers a lot of good credit for, a lot of good credit for, that's so bad. Why, why, why do I even do this? One thing, though, you do have to give them a lot of... That's just such bad diction on my part. They're good after the catch, or they finish their runs strongly. So... 
good read right here by DT. I want to get none of this was smooth here. I just ate two tacos for lunch, and now I'm just worthless. Anyway, uh, DTR reads that this blitz is coming here, and once again, uh, <laughs> not a quarterback expert by any stretch of the imagination, but it's always good to throw in the direction of the blitz. Throw the football where they came from. Good stuff right here by DTR. Sees a blitz. Pass protection here is pretty immaculate. Notice the ball placement here is really good too. Okay. Cleats in the ground. Just rips this ball. And you notice he throws it a little bit behind him. So he doesn't get creamed by this guy. And because of that, it allowed 14 here, who you just saw a minute ago, to make this amazing yak play here to break that tackle and gain a few extra yards we'll show you the other angle in a second but we got a high snap here again but let's pick up this touchdown throw and once again ucla great pass protection and once again it seems as if ucla wants to get vertical okay so they trust dtr to make a throw down the field and to me this was one of his worst throws it was Behind him when the receiver clearly had the step and the corner just played this ball absolutely horribly, okay? And if you're Durante Jones, you'll live with this because your two best players on your team are, especially just on your defense, are your corners. So you got Eli Ricks on one side and you got Derek Stingley on the other. And the one thing in particular with Derek Stingley where he's an expert is are these deep routes. You know, obviously his famous interception against Auburn. So here we go. We get the reverse angle. Once again, you'll see the high snap here causing him to jump. Okay. Once again, those high snaps came when the tackle was lined up on the center. Uh, I counted three or four high snaps, but nothing really too, too erratic. And DTR allows this ball to sail on him. Now, once again, I'm not a... Not James Washington or Quincy Avery. I'm not a quarterback expert. Don't know what actually specifically went wrong with his mechanics here. But this ball does flutter. Okay? And receiver clearly had a step. You obviously don't want to underthrow this. The corner just loses his balance. Begins to panic. And very clearly, if he... And, and look, he even turned his head. He even turned his head to look for the ball. But obviously, not all athletes have the hips to keep their balance to do that. Corner loses his balance. Ball is underthrown. When, if he would have let him, it would have been a touchdown and he had some room to operate. But that's the thing. I might be wrong about this. This could have been an actual good throw, right? Because it was completed for a touchdown and... You know, you do avoid overthrowing your receiver when you throw a ball like that. I just think if that's Ricks or Stingley, that ball is going to get picked. So, yeah, you know what the funny thing is, is DTR actually did hear the haters. I had a few people send this to me. I did find his TikTok account uh, to be very interesting, to say the least. It actually has a huge impact on what we're going to do tomorrow about Dorian Thompson Robinson's running ability okay so i'm about to give you a layered analysis from his throws partially from someone who actually did play the quarterback position jt o'sullivan had a really good film study on dtr and i came away with the same conclusion that he's a really solid quarterback who in particular is really good when he is under heavy pressure and what i really find to be interesting though is Yes, his QBR was bad, but his overall EPA per play was actually really good. Okay, so those are both analytics. Uh, I like QBR better because it does factor in uh, the level of competition you're playing, thus the 41 because it was Hawaii. But this is the most fascinating thing, and this is from my friend at CFB Numbers. His rush EPA, so when he ran, was actually really bad and that's why i think tomorrow's film study is going to be more important than his throwing right how much does lsu need to worry about his dual threat ability 
And the answer is actually a little bit more complex than you probably think. So uh, that's why you got to, you know, watch all these film studies because we're going to piece it all together tomorrow. And I'm going to give you my honest thoughts about what the UCLA offense is going to do to LSU. So obviously, you know, it, it kind of stinks because there is more important things to worry about with obviously the LSU team is in Houston and uh, to get ready for this game, which in the grand scheme of things really doesn't mean anything compared to what um, Louisiana is going through right now. And come on, Louisiana is the best state in the on the planet. And we're going to get through this together. And shout out to Leonard, our, one of our most loyal PHLers, our electrician, who's just going to be at work 16 hours a day. So don't forget our UCLA run defense uh, a UCLA rush attack film study is floating in your face right now. It is power hour LSU bum. Ah, uh, I think we're doing salmon tonight. Let's go.